Let us pray. Loving and faithful God, we do give you thanks for your word. We ask for your insight and understanding that you give by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What what a week um, and what a last couple of years. Uh, We've seen this week uh, terrible images of Uh, invasions in Ukraine and people suddenly in the midst of war zones in their own country, their own cities and communities. And uh, it's, it's tough to see that even on the other side of the world and just to be thinking about what people there are dealing with and going through and also the fear that that might bring up in us as well, just about what that might mean for our world and what's going to happen in the next weeks and months and years. And today, more than anything, really, I just want to encourage you and say it's going to be okay and keep going. It's going to be okay. Uh, And I'm I'm not putting a but there. Sometimes you'll hear sermons where I'll say, I want to say it's going to be okay, but really, actually no. Today I want to tell you it's going to be okay. It really is. Uh, Yesterday, me and my wife and my daughter, we went for a walk in Assiniboine Park. And there's a, a cafe there, and they had the, the little outdoor window open. And uh, for the cafe, we went up to the window, and we got uh, hot chocolate and poutine. <laughs> and it was good for the soul. <laughs> That's it's good for the soul. I joked as we were ordering that it, I think chocolate and gravy go well, really well together, right? And, and we kind of laughed. But you know what? It did. It did go well together. Like hot chocolate and poutine, they go really well together. So the gravy on the cheese, on the fries, and the hot chocolate were great. And I just felt like I needed to to be outside. Yesterday was a beautiful day. Uh, We've had a lot of very cold weather and a lot of snow, and uh, it wasn't It was actually what it's supposed to be in terms of temperature at the end of February yesterday. Um, And so I just felt like you need to be outside. And and so it was great. You know, we just got out and enjoyed walking around and, um, and having that time together. Now, we know that all of life is not a walk in the park. And it's certainly not all hot chocolate and poutine. (laughs) But still, we all need things like that to lift our spirits, right? Now, I think in our story today that maybe Peter, James, and John felt encouraged by their trip up the mountain with Jesus. Maybe they needed it. Maybe it hadn't been easy for them. Um, just before going on the mountain hike, there's a kind of a difficult episode that, uh, that they had had with Jesus. Jesus had asked Peter uh, a series of questions, but it ended with, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, the Messiah of God. In other words, he was saying, you're the one we've all been waiting for, the one who will fulfill all of our hope for a restored people. For things being put right, that's who you are. And then we read that after that, Jesus told them this. He he told them that he must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And as Jesus continues talking, he says to all of them listening, he says, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. So you see, Peter had actually just got it right. Peter is seeing clearly. This is the one that they have been following and he's right. He is the one in whom they've placed their hopes and who will set all things right. 
But this one who is going to fulfill all of that says he's going to suffer and die. And that anyone who wants to follow him must also pick up their cross. Well, that isn't very encouraging. But about eight days later, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up a mountain to pray. And while Jesus is praying, his appearance changes to dazzling white. And Moses and Elijah appear and are there talking with him. It's this amazing mystical experience that they have. But it's also maybe even uh, kind of like a little nostalgic as well. So it seems really weird, obviously. Someone's transformed to be dazzling and shining white while two other uh, figures from uh, Jewish history and from the scriptures suddenly just show up and are talking to him. But actually it also elicits sort of this nostalgia for, oh yeah, like the times of Moses and Elijah when things were maybe better somehow, or maybe different than what we're hearing from Jesus? When it was really clear who the leaders of the people were? When it was clear which was the right side and which was the wrong side? (laughs) And Peter's response to this experience that he's having is to say, it is good for us to be here. It is good for us to be here. They are seeing Jesus as he really is. And there's Moses and there's Elijah. It is good for us to be here. He says, let's build three shelters. One for each of you. For Jesus, for Moses, and for Elijah. In other words, let's just stay here. Let's just stay here where it's good. Where it's good to be. But the thing is, a Jesus who gives us only dazzling displays, escapes from life, or nostalgia for a time that was before is no real savior. This is not real, and it's not lasting encouragement. A cloud covers them, and they are afraid as they are enveloped by it. Uh, This cloud showing up is a feature of when God shows up a lot of the time, as is going up a mountain to meet with God. In fact, Moses himself met with God in a cloud on a mountain. And the cloud comes around them and they hear a voice. This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. And then the cloud disappears. Everything goes back to normal. Moses and Elijah aren't there anymore. And they go down the mountain. What is the encouragement here? Is it really at the height of the mountain with the dazzling appearance and the mystical appearances of the towering figures from the scriptures? Well, yes. That is encouraging. We need those kinds of moments. Jesus did, in fact, invite them on the mountain journey to experience and witness it, to to have that experience. It was good, and it was wonderful. We can also be encouraged in those kinds of experiences. And sometimes they're big things, mountaintop experiences, we call them. And sometimes they're smaller things, appreciating the everyday, noticing the small blessing, giving thanks for what we can give thanks for. But actually, all of those things, the the big things and the little things, when we can see them, that's actually often when we don't really need encouragement. The time when we can do it is the easier time. The place where we need encouragement the most is when we are unable to appreciate things. When it feels like There is nothing to be thankful for. The time we need encouragement is when there is no big moment, nothing dazzling, and when there isn't even a cup of hot chocolate. (laughs) 
The time we need encouragement is when there's a war breaking out or when hope has been destroyed. When Peter said, it is good for us to be here, do you think maybe part of why he said it was that he knew that when they left there, the things that Jesus said about him having to suffer and die and about his followers having to carry their crosses, that that was actually going to happen? Why leave here on the mountain? It is good for us to be here. And the answer from the cloud, from God, it isn't really a full answer. It's simply, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. Because the true source of encouragement is actually not the experience that you have on the mountain. The true source of encouragement is Jesus himself. And especially when you are very much not on the mountain, when times are the most challenging, is when we need to remember the source of the true encouragement. Listen to him. Listen to this chosen one of God. Listen to him because we know that there are all kinds of other things that we might listen to that will drag us completely off track. Messages that will divide us and embitter us. Messages that will destroy hope in us. So listen to him. And you may, in fact, find a completely different way into hope and into life than you thought. For the hope that we have is grounded in the whole of what Jesus said when he declared that he must undergo great suffering, be killed, and on the third day, be raised. Suffering is a part of it. Death is a part of it. And it is hard to walk through those times. Jesus went through pain just like we do. And that is hugely significant. Jesus walks with us. Jesus knows what you're going through. Let him speak into your life. Listen for his whisper of tenderness and care. The one who said, come to me and rest. The struggle that we face, though, in the end is only only a part of things. The struggle that we face, the difficult times that we're in, is never, that's never the end of the story. It's not the end of Jesus' story, although it's such an important part. But there is the third day that comes as well. We have a risen Savior, one who suffered and died and was raised. So listen to him, the one who said, I am the resurrection and life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. True encouragement in all of life, for all of us, on the mountain, or in the valley means hearing Jesus clearly. This one who is crucified and risen. So listen to him. Amen. We